Secretly a giraffe, Jacob. Fucking giraffes. Yep, just a. I'm just a giraffe in a man suit. <laughs> I'm hosting a podcast. We got giraffes. <laughs> we got giraffes. We got giraffes. Yeah. Yeah, we got giraffes. Yeah. <laughs> Brought it Wait, home. Wasn't that a what's? It's we got the that beat. song in like we a commercial. Ooh, I. I mean probably well not that we have we got giraffes version but the, no we got the we got the beat i feel like that's like in a lot of like commercials for like fucking laundry detergent or some shit. <laughs> really maybe uh, i mean it's a pretty old song so it's i don't know it could conceivably be in a lot of stuff uh one of the results said we got the beat disney Oh, wait i don't know if i want that there's we got the beat movie that might be what i'm thinking of a movie not a commercial Oh, uh, man. Are, wait, do all of these movies have We Got the Beat in them? No, this says We Got the Beat movie, Erg, a music war. Yeah, but like... And uh, then that's people also search for all the different movies. Oh, here that's, we go. You know, we Got the Beat. This song was included on the soundtrack of the Char- movie Radio Rebel. Charlotte Caffey. Never heard of her. Uh, but you know her songs. You know her work. Her her work yeah, lived it. on. What? Her work lived on, man. Not good for her. Uh, so it was in. What movie was it? A oh, Radio Rebel. It was included on the soundtrack. So it wasn't made for it. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, it was recorded by the band The Go Go's. Mm. That's that's who. That's who did that song. I gotcha. <laughs> I mean, so it came up with the result of the movie called We Got the Beat. So uh, there you go. We got the in beat in a commercial. Uh, Bugle Boy commercial? What the heck is that? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Okay, well, I guess uh, We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's is in a commercial for Bugle Boy's. And uh, this is people also search for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is the show where we find the answers to life's greatest questions with the power of the internet. And we're Come not going to review any sparkling water today, but I do have to say, Jacob, I, I went to the grocery store. Okay. And... I've walked by. I, do, I haven't been drinking soda, just sparkling water. But, you mm. know, sometimes you see something that catches your eye and you're like, you know what? Not this week, baby. This week I'm drinking Dr. Pepper with <laughs> with cream soda, dude. Combined that, together. Oh, you mixed them yourself? No, no. It's a Dr. Pepper product that they came out with. Ah. And it is like... Uh, it's got to be some of the most delicious soda beverage <laughs> I've ever had in my entire really? life. Oh, man, it is. <laughs> yeah. Do you like it better than that disgusting orange Coke that you liked so much? No, I don't know. Oh, man, that's actually a hard... Dis- oh, I don't know. Orange Coke, orange vanilla Coke versus Dr. Pepper with cream soda. I don't know. I I think that Dr. Pepper might take it, man. And what's weird is I don't even really like regular Dr. Pepper that much. Hmm. But Dr. Pepper with cream soda in it, it's, it's like the perfect combination. I mean, I do, I do like Dr. Pepper, and I used to drink... I, I went through like a cream soda phase when I was like 19, I think. 18, 19. I would just get Fago cream sodas all the time. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then I drank cream soda so many times that I just stopped liking it all like i just it started becoming disgusting to me because of how much i drank it (laughs) which that's starting to happen to me with diet coke right now because i've been drinking diet coke a lot oh man that's why i switch to like different flavors of things every week or so i don't know there's just something about the convenience of like stopping at the gas station to get a big ice cold uh diet coke and uh you know, I'm not going to drink, like, a f- full sugar soda because that's just, like, a death wish, you know? Yeah. 
Because I do it pretty regularly, but I've... Done... RC Cola is a death wish, Jacob. <laughs> it's got more sugar in it than Pepsi. Yeah. It's like the sugary version of Pepsi, and we all know that Pepsi's like the sweeter, sugarier version of Coke, but without like the acidic part. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, Coke definitely has like more of like a acidic presence, whereas Pepsi kind of tastes just like sugary cola yeah and rc is sugary pepsi so it's like the sugar king does it literally have more sugar than pepsi yeah a lot rc has so much sugar in it just search rc versus pepsi sugar content rc versus pepsi sugar (laughs) um okay if you ask uh, which I prefer. It's a toss-up for me between RC and Coke. This is coming from Quora.com. But for the Pepsi is last of three because it tastes sweeter even sweeter than even RC, even though RC has more sugar. Ah, oh, it does have more sugar, but Pepsi tastes sweeter? I disagree. RC was, like, really sweet. I had one recently, and it was just like, whoa. What are they doing here? I also did go through like an RC phase, and I think it's back in the day, like when I first started drinking spirits. Um, I my first one ever was spiced rum. Yeah, that was like my go-to. I always got the. It was like the knockoff version of uh, uh, Captain. Uh, what Morgan? Captain Morgan. Yeah, it was like the ripoff of that, but it's called Lady Bly. And it's like a, la- a sexy lady pirate on the bottle. Man, I kind of <laughs> want to know what that looks like because I, I don't remember <laughs> that. A lady Bly, she sounds hot, dude. She's pretty hot. And, lady Bly. And pretty tasty. It's spelled Bly, B-L-I-G-H. B-L-I-G-H. Yeah. What is oh, okay, okay. Look Let's at see. that sexy pirate in a corset. Yeah, she's, she's pretty good. Like... If I saw this at a Renaissance festival, I'd be like, um, I'd be impressed, you know, yeah. with that costume. Originally, uh, or I'm uh, the reason that I stopped drink it, drinking uh, spiced rum is because it's not even a forty percent liquor. Like and it probably has a ton of sugar. In yeah, it. yeah, it does. Like rum is actually made with a lot of so sugar. So it's like the RC cola of liquor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, spiced and rum. Eventually, I learned that having a sugary content and a and liquor makes you more hungover because the liquor like uh, chemically bonds with the sugar, so it takes your body much longer to process. I'm wondering if that's liquor. like partially why wine gives a lot of people headaches too. Yeah, yeah, because I of think the so. sugar content. Uh, but you can get clear rum. I don't know if it, I don't know if Lady Bly makes the clear one. Oh, coconut well, rum. coconut rum, but that's also sugary. Uh, also, even the clear rum, like. It's still made with sugar, though. Like, that's just naturally what the fermented, uh, you know, it's ingredient got less sugar is. sugar in it? Yeah. I uh, mean... Oh, because it doesn't have any added flavors. Yeah, because spiced rum is technically like a liqueur because it's less than 40%, so it has, it's like, it, it's flavored, you know? Yeah. Similar to, like, Southern Comfort or... Uh, what's the... Uh, uh, Jägermeister is a liqueur. Like, I think... Uh, Anything less than 40% is technically classified as liqueur. Hmm. And that's that's actually a good segue, Ryan, because the other week we uh, podcasted about booze. And uh, I mentioned that I had a little sample of a liqueur called Fernet Branca. You remember mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. And I, te- I told you that Jeff Davis loves that stuff. I remember. Well, the last time that I hit up the good old booze store. I, s- I thought about it again and I got you one. Um uh, cuz it is so god awful. I can't it's hard to describe. I'm so I'm going to describe the taste to these fine people. And I won't Fernet be offended. Branca liqueur Fratelli Branca distillery. Yeah, it's Italian, I believe. Yeah. And it's technically an uh, aperitif, so it's something that you might drink after a meal, 
to help you digest. Man. Or no, aperitif is the one you have before you eat. So it's, you know, like a, you I know. Have to get a sniff here. It's like an appetizer for your meal, if that, you will. That smells not so great. Well, when I told you that my description was like, it's similar to like, toothpaste mixed with Jägermeister and you're like oh it's I like, like toothpaste mixed with Jägermeister but it smells kind of like cigarettes <laughs> yeah it does that's the other thing that I forgot yeah, to mention it smells like cigarettes what the hell man it's weird okay so. and if you can't drink all of it I don't worry about it it's, it was not very expensive so oh, I'm gonna just drink a little swig yeah you, you definitely right now. take a little one to start off with let it rest on the palate. <laughs> <coughs> oh, oh, and mix in like a splash of cough medicine, maybe. Oh, oh, you know those those oh, uh, you know those like strips that make your breath fresh. <laughs> a like listerine those, strip. Yeah, a listerine strip. Oh um, man, it's like you took like twelve of those and just put them all over the inside of your mouth. <laughs> wow. Oh. But then, like, smoked, like, a pack of cigarettes. And I only drank, like, I took a sip, like. Yeah, this is an airline bottle that I got for you. Yeah, I like took. A, a tiny miniature ugh, 50 milliliter bottle. That and was Ryan, probably, like, one milliliter tops that yeah. I just drank. And it is, it's not going It was away. definitely not a manly sip. Like, it was, I don't know. I definitely want to go in for another one and try it. I got to know. <laughs> it's definitely not something very enjoyable to me like i don't know why people like that stuff oh i almost threw up just trying to like keep that down yeah that's oh my god that's, that, is, that was how my experience was that is that is bad i don't i can't say i recommend the the Fernet branca as a review <laughs> it's so to to sum it all it up it looks really classy and you know i actually don't mind the smell but oh man just my tongue is puckering thinking about the taste like yeah like oh man it makes it makes me sick <laughs> it makes me physically ill uh, i am now physically ill at the beginning of this sick. podcast oh yeah happy 9 11 by the way happy well you know what i thought was interesting is we I, talk I, about that one 9 11 story and i was like oh it's cool it was like it came out like right before yeah and yeah it was kind of like a nice like when I edited it, I was like, "Ah, oh, man! If only this was like one week or two weeks later, it would be it would uh be recorded, right?" Obviously, when you're you're the listener is gonna be at the very least, uh, uh, wait, wait, what's today? It's gonna be nine fifteen. Yeah, nine fifteen. Yep. So. <laughs> It's so cool. happy nine fifteen, everyone. Cheers. Uh, never forget, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, that's the show, everyone. Yeah, uh, thanks for thanks listening for to people. Listen to people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but for real, Jacob, have, have you ever been drunk, dude? Oh man, I thought you were about to say, have you ever been in nine eleven? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, I don't know why. <laughs> why would I say that? I don't know. I wouldn't put it past you, though. <laughs> and I wouldn't put it past me. All right, either. sorry. What, what were I was you like, asking? Jacob, you ever been drunk? <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever been drunk? <laughs> yeah, Jacob. Oh man, you are uh, such a joker, Ryan. <laughs> Round of applause, everyone. If you're listening uh, at home, if you're driving, you know, yeah. take your hands off the steering wheel That's and. A good one. Uh, anyway, like okay, so you've been drunk. Yeah. So, so like many times. <laughs> you ever been like drunk somewhere? Maybe like out in the wilderness. Uh, once I went camping that one time. Remember, I told you. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I've you were drunk once. when you were out camping. Actually, I've camped uh, maybe two or three times. But the one time I went with some friends, and uh, you know, we just stayed for one night. We got a little bit frigged up, mm -hmm. as you might. Maybe we cooked some dogs. Over Heck, the open yeah. flame, bro. Yeah. We used to cook dogs, bro. <laughs> we, used to, we, we used to roast our weenies over the flame, bro. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'm nah. not going to bring that guy back. I might, though. Sometimes. But, uh, yeah. We might have uh, touched. Uh, no. I mean, <laughs> oh, 
might have gotten drunk and ate Touched some hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Accidentally, yeah, over, accidentally over the, over the fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes like, you, you, a little you got bit your, your dog wiener. on my dog, bro. <laughs> you got your wiener char on my char, dude. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh man. Anyway, so yeah, so your wieners were were. We're no, but you together were, you were like, asking me, have I ever been drunk in the wilderness? Where was that going? Oh, oh, I was just saying, like, you know, sometimes when you get drunk outside in the wilderness, you know, you go exploring for a while. And there's some scary things out there, Jacob. Mm, okay. Yeah. And Ryan's uh, segueing us into our topic, which is... Carnivorous plants. Mm, I, I nearly forgot because we went on so many tangents. I and I served you for net bronca. Yeah, I just I, I wasn't expecting it. I needed you to know how bad it was because you literally it's really bad. It's like undescribable. Like Ryan said, it's like it's like Listerine strips and cigarettes, but then add in like the taste of Jaeger kind of and and also like a little bit of like cough syrup too. It and black licorice. The, it doesn't taste like this the entire time, but like Listerine strips, like. The aftertaste is just straight like your mouth burning with Listerine strips. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The sensation, that is. Yeah, the sensation. Yeah, it is. But, ugh, fuck. I mean, I was about to, like, take... Like, if you took a fucking carnivorous plant and opened its mouth and put fucking Fernet Bronca in it... <laughs> Fern- yeah, Fernet Bronca, I believe. Uh, that... That plant would immediately pass... Like, it would die. It would pass away. That plant would be gone. <laughs> Real quick before, just search for Frenette Bronca. I, I, okay, okay. I, well, it's I, a plant's favorite. I forget beverage. what it. I forget what it's about, or what it's about. I forget like what the ingredient is that makes it like that. I looked it up before. Oh, it's look. Uh, in in Milan in 1845, it is one of the best known Italian bitters. No, Italian bitters. Oh, flavor. It says right there, bitters. It is bitter. By Fratelli Branca Distillery from 1845. Man, oh. people's taste buds was fucked up Came back then. from Milan, <laughs> dude. That's the fashion capital of the Ita- Italy. Is that right? Yeah, Milan. Oh, it's very fashionable there. Mm. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful people wearing some beautiful things. Beautiful people. Not, and they're probably drinking Fernet Branca and having a great time. Oh man, mouth I, like cigarettes. I I was tempted to like try it out with you, but I, it's so bad. You I just taste, yeah, I, there's plenty left, Jacob. I don't want, really ever want to taste it again. You want to get into talking about plants and you just you, your mouth is not feeling pretty fresh? Just grab a swig. Ugh. But yeah, like if you're out in the woods, you, it's it's strange because there's plants that actually could eat, technically eat. I would think they could eat humans because Some if they're carnivorous. Plants. Yeah, yeah. I know that most of them probably only eat like insects and whatnot. But like, imagine if like a plant could eat you. Can a, I, I? I just need to know. Can a plant eat you? <laughs> what do you think this is, Ryan? Little shop of horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that's a cool image. Oh, God. Okay. I'm scared, Ryan. This is like a creepypasta. <laughs> Man-eating tree can refer to any of the various legendary carnivorous plants large enough to kill and consume a person or other large animal. Dude, there's man-eating uh, tree. Man, there's a man-eating tree. Yeah, he eats people. Well, it says it's a legendary carnivorous plants large enough to consume a person so but look depiction of a man being consumed by yatavio carnavius tree found in both africa and central america from sea and the land by jw buell i wonder if that's a fictional novel ryan i think that this illustration is a hundred percent real <laughs> so Oh man. Um, okay, in his sixth eighteen sixty five book, uh, Salamanders and Other World Wonders, <laughs> science author Willie Lay <laughs> Wink <laughs> Willie Lay <laughs> determined that 
<laughs> That's Willie really his name, Lay. though. Yeah, Willie L E Y Lay. Uh, determine the Makoto tribe. Carl Lich and the Madagascar man eating tree all appear to be fabrications. The facts are pretty clear by now. Of course, uh, the man eating tree does not exist. There is no such tribe. Oh. What about. Damn! It's What's like... Vampire Vein? Vampire Vine? Yeah. Oh. Vampire Vine. Sorry, I said Vein. Let's see. Described a plant in Nicaragua called by the natives the Devil's Snare. Devil's the snag. plant Devil's had snag. the capability to drain. Fun, but sulks in the sun, Jacob. <laughs> what? It's a quote from Harry Potter. <laughs> what was it? Devil's Snare. What's the quote? Uh, it's it sulks in the sun. Uh, uh, wait, crap! I don't even remember. I just said it. Yeah, I I didn't hear it. Oh, though. it's deadly fun, but sulks in the sun. Oh, they said that in the movie. Yeah, fucking Hermione Granger, dude. Devil's snare. Because That's... well, it's a rhyme to help you remember that the devil's snare is weak to like sunlight. <laughs> and what would the devil's snare be? I don't. It's, I don't it, know the lore of Harry Potter. It's like these. They're like these vines that you get. You get trapped in, and you have to completely relax, or oh. it'll kill you. So you. But if you're completely relaxed, like. You fall into it. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm gonna throw up. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty cool, dude. That, but uh, if it, if it, if you get hit with like sunlight or like light, it, it just dissipates and dies. That narrative device to me sounds uh, pretty bad. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's not a vampire vine, which is a plant that has the capability to drain the blood of any living thing which comes within its death-dealing touch. It's uh, pretty cool. I wouldn't want to meet up with one of those in the woods after uh, smoking a doobie. <laughs> Dude, that doobie was really good, but this freaking vampire vein, it's, it's, it's sucking sweet. out my leg. It's sucking out my soul, bro. Right out of my peepee tip. It's wrapped around my entire peepee and my entire <laughs> torso. <laughs> my blood's being sucked from everywhere. <laughs> It's got me. Help. <laughs> bro, help. You used to help. <laughs> I need the help, bro. <laughs> this freaking vine's got me. Oh, vine's man. sucking out my pee-pee. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that uh, that guy is going to be the next. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> um, that guy's going to go boom. <laughs> used to boom, bro. We used to go boom. <laughs> So there's a lot of these, there's a lot of these different types of man eating. There was plants. a lot of literature and film uh, references too. Dude, it's right here. Dude, Harry <gasps> Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, J.K. Rowling <sighs> included a man eating plant, also called Devil Snare. <laughs> Did that show a picture when you hovered over the name J.K. Rowling? Yeah. Oh, look at that stupid bitch. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just Don't, kidding. She's one of the most influential women authors of all time jacob i know i was, I was just I was, it was a it was a bit i oh, don't okay. i don't hate you women. don't make fun of jk <laughs> around me but i don't know anything like some harry potter you like her you no, have a crush I, I, on her yeah i do because she wrote harry potter dude i've never I, i've never been ryan anyone anyone Never Ooh, been to Harry... Harry Potter is okay with me. I've never been to the Harry Potter <laughs> universe, so to speak, because I've never, never seen any of the moving pictures. I of know it. you haven't. It never bothers read any me. Of the books. How are you going to know about the man-eating plants? How are you going to know about Muggles? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the man-eating plant. So, is there any real? I mean, is a vampire vine like that's? That's real, right? No, I don't think so. Oh. Well, it doesn't say if it's real or not. Uh, uh, Discuss the story in Loose for Magazine. Oh, okay. So this it was a guy that described it from 1891. Oh, so we don't know if it existed, All right. but a guy did describe it and write it down. We're almost halfway through the podcast. We need to find the answer. Are there really any uh, man-eating plants? Are there really any? 
Man eating plants. I don't think plants? there are. I do not think there are. Man waiting plants. Man waiting. Uh, no carnivorous plant in existence is a direct threat to the average human being. Uh, that doesn't mean it's not a direct <laughs> threat to some human being. <laughs> yeah, like a like an infant, like yeah, a newborn like baby, a small baby. I don't think it could person. get eaten though. But one of the plants considered to be responsible for rumors of man-eating flora is something known as Amorphophallus <laughs> titanum, or the corpse flower. Experts do consider this to be the largest, most pungent plant in the natural world. So the corpse flower is the... So it stinks you to death? Like what? Maybe. It smells like corpses and then... (laughs) Flower smells like poop. (laughs) This flower smells like grandma. (laughs) Aw. Okay, people also ask. Yeah, I can... can, Okay, go ahead. Wait. Oh, okay. I was going to say, are there man-eating plants? There's a lot of funny ones, too. Has a plant ever eaten a human? (laughs) Can a Venus fly trap eat a human? Are are there plants that eat animals? Should we answer all of those? Should we do a Yeah, let's check them out. Yeah, okay. The first one was, uh, are there man-eating plants? Yeah, and that's uh, there's probably some good reason why man-eating plants never evolved in Madagascar or anywhere else. Madagascar does have a specific species of carnivorous plants, though. Uh, Nepethys madagascariensis. <coughs> Nailed it. One of the... <laughs> Nepef- Nepethys? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Madagascariensis. <laughs> One of the tropical pitcher plants that occur from there uh, to indonesia and australia okay so does that mean it's real that it exists there no it it doesn't it it has that species but it doesn't say that it so there are man-eating plants like that would be an example of one but i don't know if they've ever eaten a man but it did say it did say it says carnivorous plant yeah. That's what that's what our original search was that we never even got to, but we will in a second. That's true. Has a plant ever eaten a human? Here's this will be the real <laughs> answer, Jacob. Um, okay. Oh wait, this is the legendary one we already learned about. Oh, but a man yeah. eating tree. So it's basically saying it's legend. Yeah. Can a Venus flytrap eat a human? <laughs> These are the hard hitting answers. Well, Venus flytrap is obviously the most famous of the carnivorous plants. But uh, uh, will a Venus fly tram uh, bite a person? (laughs) Fortunately Mm -hmm. for people, Venus fly trap plants can't eat anything much bigger than a house fly, and mostly they eat mosquitoes and gnats. They eat babies, bro. (laughs) They're they're eating babies. (laughs) A baby's smaller than a fly. (laughs) Got eaten by (laughs) a You see, me and my wife are both very short, so our baby's just tiny. (laughs) Fly trap's gonna get her. Oh, you said Bro, baby. Fly trap's gonna eat my baby. That's funny because I was saying pee pee. My pee pee's smaller than <laughs> my a fly. Pee-pee? Oh, I thought you were saying baby. Oh no, but they're uh, both funny. Dude, my pee pee. <laughs> so little. Venus fly trap freaking chomped it right I off. Need extra small condoms for my pee pee. <laughs> huh. Bruh. Oh man. <laughs> If we bro, have... those are way too big for my pee pee, bro. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> if we ever had any women listeners, we don't now. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Penis flat trap, bro. <laughs> Came and bit my pee pee. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, I just spent water all over myself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was like a, a flood, man. That was like a sprinkler. <laughs> oh, man. That got me too hard. We got there, folks. We got uh, there. Okay. Yeah, now we're both wet from my spit. But uh, we're having a good my old time. My eyes are wet. <laughs> <laughs> You're crying, crying over the carnivorous plants that we're looking up. Pain is fun, trap, bro. <laughs> uh, maybe we should look up different types of carnivorous plants so we can actually give some examples. Dear Internet, 
Tell me all the carnivorous. Oh, points. here we go. All the carnivorous. All the thing I do. All the thing I do. Oh, man, it's really uncomfortable being covered with my own spit. <laughs> uh, okay. There's okay. an entire list of carnivorous plants, bro. I know. This is a lot. I didn't know there was. Holy oh, my crap. God. That's more than 10 or however. That's like 19, 20. Tw- t- uh, <laughs> holy crap. This 29, 30. I think. 30? 30? Yeah. This About 30. 30. Different. And they all have Latin names. I like this one because it's called the Darlingtonia. Whoa, that one says penis fly trapia. What? <laughs> uh, oh, this looks like. Oh, this one looks like a phallic. Well, not phallic. <laughs> what? What's the What's the term? Oh, yonic. Like a, Remember we looked yonic, it up. Yonic. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say that, Ryan. That's a little, you know. I'd, I'd hate to make the analogy there, but You're right. uh, Dionea masiculpa or ma- mas- ma- 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 We already lost me- all the female muse. listeners, Jacob. So <laughs> yeah, that's it true. It doesn't matter if I make jokes like that at this point. I guess not. Uh, <laughs> Dionea muscupula. <laughs> Dionea muscupula, my bad over here. <laughs> Pepe, bro. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of these carnivorous yeah. plants. Uh, holy shit. Is this shit. really called a <clears throat> Philcoxia? That's a good Pen- name. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Philcoxia. Phil huh. Ew. Oh, look at that one. That's <laughs> fucking disgusting. That looks uh, like a real life version of like a weeping bell. That's true. That's or a, wait, is that Nepenthes villosa? Nepenthes villis villio It looks like a, a, a oh, sunflower that's toilet. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> sunflower toilet. Yeah, yeah. Imagine I mean, what, in a way, yeah. Yeah, if you want to know what I mean by that, you may want to go check out on the YouTube video of the picture. Or I kind of want to look s- it up yourself. I kind of want to. S- vi- I wonder if you search for uh, what is weeping bill like, based on yeah oh yeah he is a man who <clears throat> plant we've seen him eat james hundreds of times <laughs> <laughs> they're blasting off again oh uh, what is weeping bill did he really eat james a bunch yeah that was like the the joke it was like uh oh wait is that the biggest one what's the biggest one I don't know, cause it's bell sprout, and then that turns into uh, weeping bell. Uh, weeping bell. What? Is... Pitcher plants. Oh yeah, that's what we were looking up. Sweet. Pitcher plants. Yeah. Guess when that article was posted? Seven years ago today on nine eleven in twenty thirteen. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Never forget. I won't. <laughs> Um, Victory Bell and its relatives <laughs> are based on pitcher plants, a group of pant- plants that can catch their prey with an arrangement known as a pitfall trap. Dun, dun, dun. So Weeping Bell is the medium one, right? And Victory yeah. Bell, is the bi- that's the big one? Yeah. Which one did the Team Rocket have? I feel like they had Victory Bell. Victory oh, Bell? Let's see. Who did James have? <laughs> Who did James have? I just want to know it'll come up with me. He had a uh, he had a wabafet and a fucking meowth. Yeah. Okay. So, what did James have? It didn't come up with anything related to plants. No. The first thing that came up was James Charles, uh, internet personality on Wikipedia. He has twenty point seven million subscribers. Well, you how can about tell, that, Ryan? He's winning the SEO results. I here. wish we had that many subscribers uh, on YouTube, which Maybe you can just go to and subscribe and like and, and subscribe and like and subscribe. Yeah, <clears> and we can ask what? him how he got that many subscribers, and then maybe we'll be able Dear to get that many James subscribers as well. Charles, may I have some subscribers, please? And James Charles is going to look at us and well, he's going to be like, "Bro, <laughs> <laughs> the best way to get more subscribers is to stop saying bro, bro." <laughs> Bro, <laughs> do people still say bro? Like when you're at the gym getting swole? Bro, you need to talk a little bit less about peepees, bro. <laughs> 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 
what James <laughs> Charles would tell us to, to, if you we think? asked him. Yeah. Mm. Maybe be, I'll maybe I'll have to cut that part out. It's the it's the voice of James Charles. <laughs> Had to cut out the funniest part of the podcast, bro. <laughs> wasn't PC. <laughs> <laughs> what well, wasn't PC about it? Did you ever get far enough into South Park when uh, principal or PC principal was the newest principal of the school? Uh, I don't think so. That's pretty much how he talks. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And if somebody says something like intolerant or something, he like will bust through the door and be like, Shut your fucking mouth! You intolerant piece of shit! He, like, berates everyone if they say something that's not PC. Oh. PC principal, bro. It's pretty funny. Is it just a running gag in the show now? Yeah, he became the principal, like, I think after season, like, I don't know, eight or nine or ten or something. Around there. It's the same time when they started, like, serializing South Park to where, like, if you didn't watch all the lead up episodes, you wouldn't get a lot of the jokes because they had like running bits, you know, because they like serialized it as opposed to before they they're just like one offs like any other cartoon. Like you can just watch any one you want. Yeah, it's pretty good. Sounds I'd recommend good. it. South Park. I would love still to get holds back up. into it. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I mean, it's still making new episodes <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Trey the- Parker, Matt Stone. Some genius men. They're very genius. Yeah. Hard working geniuses. I'll tell you that. But Book of Mormon, still need to see that. I heard it was really good. I want to see it. And it's a Broadway musical we could go see together. Yeah, it's one of the only musicals I would actually want to see. Do you think you'll like it enough where you'd actually like get into musicals from it? Like, Probably oh, not. Oh, okay. I mean, I think I would appreciate it for its own humor and then be like, that's good. Yep. And I then- mean, I, 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 there are some musicals that I've liked. I mean, like film, you know, film musicals. Uh, I've never been to like an actual musical because I don't know if I don't want to sit through the whole thing, to be honest. But uh, Chorus Line, that's a good... Uh, musical uh film and then uh sweeney todd sweeney dude. todd that's the other one i've yeah. seen that's pretty good that's the best very gory so if you like violence and johnny depp probably uh right up your alley oh and you know like uh, <laughs> uh um <laughs> i was thinking like that other musical it's famous it's got the man eating plant man Oh, yeah, Little yeah, Shop of Little Horrors. Shop of Horrors. I forgot that was a musical. Too. Yeah, it's a musical. Well, it's a musical film. Was it did it start as like a like a Broadway? Uh I guess we should find out since we're searching for other carnivorous plant and weeping bell. You got time for think? a little bit of car- cartoon talk and a little bit of everything here on People Also Search For. Where did Little Shop of Horrors come from? Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it okay. It was a film first, but it was a musical film, right? Produced by David Geffen, released by Warner Brothers on December nineteenth, nineteen eighty six. It was filmed on the Albert R. Broccoli <laughs> Seven stage at the Pine Double O Seven. Double O Seven stage yeah, at the, the Broccoli Double O Seven stage <laughs> at the Pinewood Studios in England. Whoa. Overhead train track was conducting. Wow, that's pretty cool. I don't. I I actually couldn't even watch the whole mu- the movie though. Why? I disliked it so much. I fell asleep. Oh, uh, I I mean I could see why you wouldn't like it. I mean, oh Audrey is the name of the uh, the plant from Little Shop of Horrors. It's like a man eating plant. It's oh, do you think uh, fucking uh, Miyamoto ripped off Little Shop of Horrors to make his uh, pipe vine thing? Wait, what? You think? I don't know what you're talking about. And Mario, do you know the piranha plants? Yeah. Do you think he ripped off that, or do you think he ripped off like just a, an actual Venus flytrap or something? Wait, what came first? Well, Little Shop of Horrors. We Mars already found out. Or Mike or Mario? What? I think the. First Mario was like 1987, right? Or 1988? Uh, first Mario, Super Mario Brothers release date. 
I'm sure if you would have just put in Mario Brothers, it would have told you like a bunch of generic stuff. But oh, it came up with the answer, and it's anniversary is coming up in two days <laughs> September 13th 1985 and then Little Shop of Horrors was 1986 so Little Shop of Horrors ripped off Mario oh whoa I didn't know that Mario came out in 85 yeah man holy shit the Little Shop of Horrors plant is probably based on a Mario pipe piranha plant <laughs> oh, oh, oh man Freaking went down the pipe. The paper got bit off. Piranha plant, bro. I was totally about to start talking like that, too. I was like, you got it down my pipe, bro. Oh, man. Oh, that was terrible. I just turned into the fire Mario, bro. It's my favorite Mario, bro. <laughs> Dude, really? My favorite Mario is Tanuki suit Mario, bro. Got that fuzzy little tail and shit. You know, but these days I'm liking that cat Mario, bro. Oh man, I forgot that there was... penguin Mario, bro. <laughs> penguin Mario. Yeah, you've ever, you ever played as penguin Mario? I didn't know there was a penguin Mario. Oh, there's a penguin Mario. I knew about Mario. the cat, but that one, the cat's from that like spin-off game, right? Where well, they're, like... they're all spin-off games at this point. But it was the it was the one for the Mario 3D World. No, nah, it think. was for oh maybe it was it was for the Wii U, I think. Mario penguin suit. <laughs> Maybe there's a Mario plant suit. Oh my god. Yeah, see? Oh, Super Mario Brothers U. Okay. Wow. He can just be every animal. Include. Well, he, no, he just puts on. A, he's just cosplaying, but then he takes on the traits of the animal. He's like the reverse Kirby, because Kirby <clears throat> eats something and turns into it. Mario just puts it around them, him. I think that started in Super Mario 3, right? Because. Mario's proven that clothes make the man. <laughs> okay. Weird when, stance. When he dresses up like a penguin, he turns into a penguin. When he dresses up like a fireman, he turns into a fireman. <laughs> clothes make the man, Jacob. Mario taught us ever since mm, Super that's... Mario Brothers, since 1985. <laughs> that's a great takeaway. But I think the animal stuff started in 3, right? Because that's when you got the frog guy. That's when you got the tanuki uh yeah, yeah 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 well no you uh, you always had the fire guy though no i'm saying the animals started in three oh, the right? animals started in three i think yeah because yeah the first one was the tanuki definitely did, no i don't no, think two, two didn't have animals because no. two is that weird one where it was actually doki doki panic but they rebranded it with like mario <laughs> that was like a skinned version of some other game yeah i, I think it yeah i've tried playing the super mario's 2 on my uh switch like emulator thing and it sucks like it's not even like i don't it's the one where you have to pick up the fucking like turnips out of the ground and throw them yeah i actually it like sucks. that one but it, i don't like it as a mario game i just like that game but it doesn't feel mm. like mario at all that's the one where you first get Yoshi. And there's all those little masks that you go down like a pot and then you're inside like the pot and there's a bunch of masks that fly around and try and attack you that are creepy. Oh, yeah. With like the slit <clears throat> eyes. And there's also the boot. That's where the boot first started, right? The big giant boot that you get inside of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. And But the cool thing about it was you could play as all four characters. Like you could play as Peach and, and Luigi and Toad and Did Mario. Did you ever see any of the uh, Nintendo leak stuff from like last month? Uh, are you talking about how they're remaking the Mario? They're remaking uh, Sunshine and Galaxy and Mario sixty four mm. for the Switch. I did not know that they were doing that, which I'm happy to hear. But that's not the leaks. I mean, oh okay. Like there was a <clears throat> there was like an actual like uh, internal like corporate leak that got out some like original files from like the mid 80s like from original mario games oh really and also there was a a leak that happened as well where um it shows uh evidence that there was a luigi programmed into mario 64 oh really yeah like you there's like there's like files that leaked out of the company and one of them is like original designs for yoshi and they look fucking awful. Like, there's original Link, uh, like, pixel arts and stuff. Were they bad? They I were feel just... like it's, it's hard to mess up a Link. 
they were like preliminary concept art. Oh, it was okay. before the finished product. Oh, like, okay. It's stuff that p- people should have never been able to see. Yeah. But it's all like all the stuff's like pretty like interesting, like especially the Luigi and and Mario 64. Yeah, I mean when they remade Mario 64 for the DS, uh they had Luigi as a playable. Like you could play as Luigi or Wario or I, f- I forget who else. Or um, Yoshi, Yoshi, just as Yoshi. Really? Yeah. For the DS? Yeah, they remade Mario 64 for it. Oh, wow. Huh. I still have my old DS. Yeah, that was good. I remember that was one of my favorite games on the DS. I actually had a DSi, which was like, it was like the upgraded version of the DS, and you could like go on the internet and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. It was all right. You couldn't, it, it didn't support any Flash, though, so you couldn't like, on youtube or anything Mm -hmm. i liked the original ds because it was like so huge but it had a cool shape like it had that like it had a a, almost like a pyramid kind of a shape really not really i mean it it was uh, it's hard to describe oh wait ds wait similar to the advance the game boy advance yeah it flipped open but like the top of it wasn't flat it was like Really? Yeah, it kind of had like a a kind of like a square, like pyramid kind of design. See? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like a step up type of thing. Yeah, like, yeah. The edges are angled, but the middle is flat. It's like a plateau, mm. but it was just like <clears throat> cool looking. Yeah, they didn't do that on any of the other ones. They made them all flat. Yeah, the I, the DS I had, it was like. Um, you know, it was a DSi, so it was like really like streamlined, like a perfectly like blank, flat, black type of you yeah know, matte like finishing. That. Yeah, it wasn't like shiny plastic like that. This was the exact one that I had, <clears throat> the red one. Oh, okay, yeah, it's definitely it has like it has like more of a roundness, whereas like the one that I the DSi, it was just like perfectly like cube like not cubic but like rectangular with like sharp edges you know yeah i remember when i had the dsi it was uh i think that's like similar to the one that i had that this black one oh that's a ds light but yeah oh those are the ones that's that were smaller they're like way more compact Mm -hmm. but uh yeah I have the DSi and still, and uh, one of the games I had for it was the Mario. It was like the new. It was called New Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, and it was like more of like I played a, it. Yeah, it was pre- that was a good. That's a good game. Yeah, I I've wanted to play Mario Maker like the new one for the Switch, but it's oh, Mario man. Maker Two. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind trying it out, but. I feel like I'd get addicted. It it. looks like more of a hobby where you can like build levels and stuff and like, ah, also you can like go online and you can play other people's levels. That's the part I want to do. I mean, how many piranha plants will be in there, man? I, I would try it out, but I don't, I don't think I would buy it because like I I would feel like I was wasting its potential if I didn't make any stages, but yeah. at the same, I know that I would not have the patience to sit down and do that for hours. That's how I feel about when I used to play Little Big Planet. I'm like, man, I'm trying to make these ridiculous levels, but like the oh, stuff like, uh, online that people spend weeks and weeks yeah, on, it's like, like beautiful, uh, and it's like oh, Christian. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come visit my little big planet. <laughs> Meet son of Chew. <clears throat> um, yeah, I never played Little Big Planet. Actually, <clears throat> I didn't have the PS3 ever, so I never could play it. Or wait, was it on PS2? Little Big Planet, no PS3. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I I only had PS2, and for many years I didn't play any video games, so I I missed that whole era. Now I just have my happy little Nintendo Switch, which you can see us play some games on on our YouTube channel. Be yeah. sure to like and subscribe. Watch us play some silly little video games. 
I actually want to play some. I, I would love to replay Mario Galaxy or Mario Sunshine. You know why I would love to play those two games? Why? Because I never played either one of them. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's, what's crazy is those are, like, straight up, like, my two favorite. Like, I love Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy. I, I remember I was, like, uh, maybe 15-ish. Is that one GameCube? Like, wait, or no, maybe I was, like... 13 or 14 i don't know yeah i don't remember what years the consoles are from but i remember being a little kid going to uh kmart when that was a thing and i would play the uh the mario sunshine demo at the store Mm -hmm. like every single time i went there so like oh this game's so cool and all i never got it no i all i had was uh i think i had a ps2 or maybe I don't still only had a PS1 at the time. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about that game was like it was the only game where Mario was actually a plumber. Like he was a plumber <laughs> in all the games, but you actually have like a plumber thing in that like he actually Oh, like and the with sunshine? The, yeah, because he had the water the water thing. jet. Yeah. So he's like actually got something plumber related. That's true. What Oh, skin kit for Nintendo DS. I was like, oh, why does that one look so badass? <laughs> oh, you thought that was badass? Yeah, it looks I thought cool. it looked like retro, like old. Yeah, it does. It has. It's just the DS skin. Yeah. I, I'd get it <laughs> if I had a DS and I still used it. Yeah. Well, Jacob, if you want to use one, I've got one right upstairs. Mm, I have a DS, though. A DSi. In the utility <laughs> attic. Hmm. Seems like it'd be a downgrade to me. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think the Switch is probably a little... DSi's bigger. got a bigger screen, bro. DSi's <laughs> got a bigger library of games, bro. What? what? Well, the DSi probably... The DS has way more games than the Switch does right No, but now. the DSi, it was just a like up-branded version oh, yeah. of the DS. Yeah, yeah. So it still did use just normal DS That's games. what I'm saying. So the library of games is way more on the, D, like, on the DS than the Switch. If you wanted to go by quantity, because the there's not that many Switch games yet. No, I was DS... saying, I was talking about the DSi, the one that I had. I know. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, if you wanted a quantity of games at cheap prices, you'd probably go with the DS. But if you want the new uh... games, you go with the Switch. Oh, you mean right now? Yeah, like yeah, if you yeah, played yeah. DS versus a Switch? <laughs> yeah, that you'd have such a wide like library mm, of games to play. That's hard to say, because you can download games from the Nintendo library like oh, that's a bunch true. of indie There's games of indie and games. I don't and, know. And even like shitty like phone app type of games that you can get for your Switch. Oh yeah, you know, there are a lot of games in that that market online. And also like n- the Switch is known as like the port machine, like oh, they yeah. ported fucking everything for it. Uh I keep seeing new ports for like old games that I never played, you know, back when I just oh, had and you the just PS2. Want to play them and you're like, oh, now's my chance. Like if they made like Shadow of the Colossus remastered for the Switch, I would fucking that would be buy that immediately. Impressive as hell if they could pull that off, dude. They they made Witcher three for the Switch. That's I mean, a good I point. think they could make Shadow of the Colossus. They could. But that was one of my favorite games for PS2, and if they remastered that shit, that's oh, one of my favorite God. games too. I think that's one of my. That's probably one of my favorite gaming experiences. Hear that, Nintendo? You need to port Shadow of the Colossus. And if they do, I'll definitely <laughs> play it. We could play it on the channel. Yeah. I would do that. We could play any variety of games. Um, but for now, we're going to get back to our original topic and find out uh, a little bit more about some carnivorous plants. Yeah. we Like the to- piranha plant. We pretty much know what they are, but you know, I had a question specifically about them that I thought of, and, mm. and that was like, okay, so if a carnivorous plant gets its energy from eating, like bugs and like meat, 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 whatever meat it can get its <laughs> my baby mouth meat, bro. <laughs> out, does it also have to like? Does it also have to like use photosynthesis to eat as well, or is it? Because that's what regular plants do. It's like photosynthesis. Yeah. Which is the process of uh, gaining energy from the sunlight. Yeah. I mean, we could look up the definition of that first if you want to. Well, 
I was saying that I think that's what it is. Ah, okay. Well, it's the, okay. <laughs> the process by which green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to synthesize foods from carbon dioxide and water. Generally involves the green pigment chlorophyll and generates oxygen as a byproduct. So I think that uh, Venus flytraps probably all have, uh, you know, chlorophyll. So they probably still need to use photosynthesis to be colorful. Do carnivorous plants use photosynthesis? <laughs> Ah, as with their more traditional relatives, carnivorous plants fuel themselves by photosynthesis. <laughs> the process requires not only sunlight, but also water, carbon dioxide, and various elements, nutrients, such as nitrogen. Okay, so they still need the sun to feed themselves, even oh, though they also eat flies. Yeah, it's a, there's people also ask, do carnivorous plants capture insects for food? If so, why would they still photosynthesize? <laughs> hey, <laughs> pretty people also succinct. Ask. That's exactly what I needed to know. Unlike carnivorous animals, carnivorous plants do not capture prey for food. Oh. For food energy. Yeah, <clears throat> but just for the required building blocks. Oh, what the hell? The leaf alterations used by carnivorous plants to trap insects and other small animals include pitfall, snap, fly, paper, and suction traps. Oh, God. There's more different eating plants. Ew. Oh, boy, that's dense. Well, yeah. You can go read uh, Kathy Joy's carnivorous plants article. I'm just going to look up. <clears throat> Different types of carnivorous plants. It's funny because it actually came up like when you typed in different types. Oh. Because you already searched for this. Well, I want to know like the different ways they kill their prey. Different types of carnivorous plants. Capturing prey methods <laughs> oh my god oh, okay. oh there we, it came up man look five, five basic, basic trapping mechanisms are found in carnivorous plants pitfall traps or pitch oh, okay. oh here we go here we go trapping mechanisms oh, it says there's 538 species up there at the top whoa that's god. a lot man ew yeah this classification includes at least 583 species that trap attract trap and kill prey absorbing the resulting uh, available nutrients ew <clears throat> ah, okay i want to know about these trapping mechanisms all right well, let's find out there's five basic trapping mechanisms in carnivorous plants number one pitfall traps where pitcher plants trap prey in a rolled leaf that contains a pool of digestive enzymes or bacteria <clears throat> There's a pitcher plant picture. All right. Oh, pitfall. So it. Oh, okay. So like it literally like is a pool of acid <clears throat> that bugs fall into. Yeah, this is they, the one that get absorbed. Yeah, <clears throat> and it like gets stuck in there. Uh, and it. This is the one that sort of looks like uh, the weep the weeping bell thing or whichever yes. victory bell or whatever. Yep. Don't want to go in. <clears throat> Even though James did. And then the next one is flypaper traps that use a sticky mucilage. I don't know what a mucilage is. I assume it's like mucus. Probably. Like a sticky substance on the outside of it. Right. Then you got snap traps. That's like the that's the one you think of when you think of a Venus fly trap where it snaps shut. Yep. That's what that's the main one that I <clears throat> I think of whenever I think. I, I never even thought about pitfall traps or flypaper <clears throat> traps. Um, okay, so next we got the bladder traps. It sucks in prey with bladder that generates an internal vacuum. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. Okay. So just like right on in there. <laughs> Yeah, like one of those lionfish things that like like sucks in its. Have you ever seen? Oh that? yeah, yeah, where it sucks in a bunch of fish and they're just like right in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Just, yeah. Yeah, but the <clears throat> lobster pop traps, also known as the eel trap, force prey to move towards a digestive organ with an inward pointing hair. Or inward pointing hairs. That's oh. so it's like a tongue with hairs. It's like a cat tongue. Oh. Oh. Is that what it is? Ew. Ugh. That's the leaf of the Oh, this is the bladder. If anyone wants to see it, just open it up on our YouTube page. Uh we're on the Wikipedia. Um They're pretty gross. <laughs> they are pretty gross. And but there's also a few other types, dude. There's combination traps. Mm. That's a trapping mess. Yeah. Oh, the trapping mechanism of the sundew Drosera giandelgera <laughs> combines features of both flypaper and snap traps. It has been termed a catapult flypaper trap. Oh, so it like catapults an arm out with like flypaper <clears throat> gooey on it and catches the the bugs and eats them. Uh. That's good. That's insane. It's not the only combination trap. Uh, the Nephethys jambon is a combination of pitfall and flypaper traps because it has a sticky pitcher fluid. Oh, okay. So you fall you you fall into the the vial. It sounds like most of them sticky. they. They just kind <clears> of <throat> catch bugs with the stickiness, whereas the snap trap, that one's the one you most people think of. That look, it's like a semicircle with like teeth coming out around. Yeah, outside. doesn't it? it it's like I think it attracts bugs with like a scent or something, or like it looks like a. Fl- I think it just waits for the thing. Like I think the like anything that touches it will trigger it to close it's it's not yeah. necessarily waiting specifically for a certain food you know like if you put your finger on it I, but what if nothing ever lands on it will it just starve then well no because it still photosynthesizes oh so it's just killing things for fun essentially yeah to get their building blocks and add it to their own pretty cool oh i like it it's pretty morbid <laughs> you know i like it and you never think that the needless plant killing, will, yeah, <laughs> that the plant community would have needless killing, but you know the plant community is a world too, and world's a terrible place. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of um, uh, vi- or speaking of the plant community, have you ever seen a a walking stick? A walking stick? No, man. Or uh, is that what it's called? Is that, are you talking about the little bug? Yeah, uh, I think it's called a walking stick. Walking right? stick, yeah. A walking stick bug. Oh, not a walk, not a stick for walking. There you go, walking stick bug. Uh oh, there's one of these in a bug's life. Oh yeah, the tall guy. Yep. Um. They're from the Phasmida family that look like sticks with legs and antenna or twigs attached to a small branch. Those things are fucking nasty. I hate that. Like, that's so creepy that, like, you could be, you know, you can be walking through the woods and, like, you think that you just brush past, like, a twig, but it's, like, alive. And it's it's They're they're big, too. That sounds like some real Harry Potter shit. It is, man. They're camouflaged well. Oh, they're called phasmid. Okay, they are generally referred to as phasmatodians, phasmids, <laughs> or ghost insects. He's Fa- a phasmatodian, bro. <laughs> bro, freaking phasmatodian on my <laughs> pappy. <laughs> or ghost insects. Oh, man, the f- calling them ghost insects makes it even more fucking creepy. Phasmids in the family... Philidae are called leaf insects, leaf bugs, walking leaves, or bug leaves. Yeah, those are creepy Dude, too. You Ugh. know what would make trees terrifying? If every time a branch fell off a tree it turned into one of these bugs? Ugh. That would be fucking terrifying, dude. That, like If regular trees had that property. Nobody steal that. I'm going to write that tonight. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. That sounds horrible. Horrifying. I know. Like, just any time a branch falls, it turns into, like, one of these that's the size of the branch. It just grows legs and starts, like, fucking walking out. Great. 
now I'm going to have to stay up all night so I don't get nightmares. Yeah, that's where that's the forest becomes your nightmare. Those are, like, whenever I see them, I think about how it would feel if it was crawling on you. And I'm just like, oh, God. It, like, makes my skin crawl. Like, I mean, they don't walk very fast, though. They, like, pretty much chill out like fucking, like, lemurs, or not lemurs, sloths. And they move very slowly, so you can't tell that they're there. Oh, oh, God. I think that these are probably scarier than carnivorous bugs. I think so. Because they're ghost insects. Ugh. Yeah. Look at that one on the guy's I don't hand. know if I don't know if a Venus flytrap could take one of these down. Search for covered in <laughs> covered in uh walking stick bugs <laughs> or phasmids. Oh. Covered in phasmids. Oh, I was going to Phasmids sounds like a fucking Star Wars character. It's Captain Phasmids. <laughs> He's going to take out the new Death Star. <laughs> covered in phasmids. Oh, that one's huge. Oh, my God. I'm going to be sick. Oh, fuck. That ex- Dude, that's exactly what I was imagining. Like, if a branch of a tree yeah, fell off. Yeah, go on and- images. That's sick. Uh, that can't be real, dude. Ew, There's ew, no way ew. that's real. Oh. Oh, my God. Ew. Well, that one's... That's, a that's more like manis. a praying mantis. The stick ones are... Oh, oh, oh. I can't <laughs> believe... There was one... There's a picture of a guy holding one that's, like, as long oh. as his arm. Oh, man. That's... Ew. I'm going to get off of this. Oh, man. Oh, oh, the big one is horrifying. Holy <laughs> shit. Ew. I feel like there's shit on me now. <laughs> God damn it. All right. See you next Tuesday. Yeah. Ew. Oh.